Okay, so here we are and in the next video for your development in learning how to code games in Scratch. So today we're going to be looking at a very small feature for a game, but one that I have always loved as a kid, which is the Legend of Zelda. So specifically what we're going to be looking at today is how to code Link's health bar. Okay, so in Zelda they present health in a different way. You know, some games have it as just a number. Some games have it as a progress bar that increases and decreases. Uh, but Zelda specifically use little heart icons, okay? Uh, so I'm going to jump in and show you a little bit of gameplay footage from the most recent Zelda. Okay, so when we jump in here, you can see that Link's running around. And up in the top left-hand corner, we have three hearts. Okay, so that indicates how healthy Link is. And in a second, what we're going to see is that Link runs over to the fire. He catches fire at this point, and then those health bar uh, icons go down. And then eventually, if we keep playing through, he eats the apple and then gets his health back. Okay, so that's more or less what we're going to be looking to build over the next, um, you know, video. And hopefully, with the little simulation that we're going to run in terms of adding and subtracting health, you're going to be able to see those icons increase and decrease as you get healthier or, um, you know, closer to death. So we'll jump into Scratch now and uh, get on with the coding. Okay, so here we are in Scratch, ready to start. We're gonna use a blank project file so that we can build this one ready to go. Now for this, we are gonna need uh, three different resources from our sprite library, and one of them is not the cat. So we are gonna just click the little bin here to get rid of the cat, that makes him go away. And then from there, we're just gonna go and collect our other three sprites from our sprite library. So if you didn't know already, you can come down to this little menu here where the cat icon is. And if you click on that, it'll bring up the inbuilt sprite library from scratch, which is awesome. So these resources are all ready to use. We need a heart. So we're gonna select that one. Okay, we're gonna come back down here and select another one, which is actually the, t the two buttons. So we're gonna grab button number four, which is our tick. That's gonna be our indicator that we have uh, increased in health for our little simulation. And then we're gonna select this one and grab button number five, which is the cross, okay? And that's gonna indicate us losing health. All right, so we'll get to the code in a second, but the first thing that we need to set up is a variable so that we can count our lives. Okay, so if you haven't done that before, the quickest and easiest way to set up a variable is to come over to your variables menu over here on the left-hand side of the screen. We're gonna click on that one and we're going to come up to the top where it has this button here that says make a variable. When you click that, it's gonna bring up this dialog box. Now, this is an important choice. We can either set a global variable by having the for all sprites option here or a local variable, which is for this sprite only. So this one in this case would actually only be on the X button, which is not where we want it. We do want a global variable in this instance because lots of different sprites are going to be interacting with that. So. What we're gonna do from here is just enter our variable name of lives. And when we click okay, you'll see that we get a little box at the top up here. Now you'll know that the Zelda scoreboard didn't have lives written there, but we are gonna leave this here so that it gives us a little bit of extra feedback in relation to whether or not our lives are showing the correct piece of data. Now from here, we are going to grab our heart and we're gonna add some code to that. So make sure you have clicked on the heart over here in your sprite library. One quick way to identify which sprite you're coding is you'll see that it's sort of ghosted out over here where you put your code so that you can very quickly identify which one is which. So from here, we need to put a couple of blocks of code on. To start with, we are gonna come into our events menu and as always grab our when green flag is clicked one. We are going to set some stuff up so that we are able to see uh, our heart in the position that we want so that it's ready to go. So the first thing we're gonna do is jump into the looks menu and we are going to change the size of our heart. So we're gonna come down to where it says set size two Okay, and we're gonna change that to 15% of its, of its size. Okay, so 15%. Now that's gonna make it much, much smaller, which is perfect because we're gonna have a line of hearts sitting here that are going to indicate where our health is sitting at. And the other thing we're gonna to do to make sure that we can get it into the right position is we're going to come into our motion menu and we are going to then select that we want it to go to a specific spot on the screen. So that position, if we grab this block here, is going to be negative 220 on the X axis, okay? And then 130 on the Y axis. 
And then the last thing that we need to do is we want it to set our variable for us. So if we click on variables here and we grab this one and say set lives to, we're gonna set it to five when we start our game each time. Okay, now so far what's going to happen is when we press the green flag, our heart is going to get smaller, it's going to move up here to the top left hand side, and we're going to have our variable set to 5. Now our buttons aren't set up to change them, but that's okay. So the next thing we're going to do is actually look at doing some really interesting code that relates to our heart itself, and then we're going to have this set up so that it makes it that we can duplicate this 5 more times and just change a couple of numbers. So jump back into your events menu, grab another when green flag is clicked option, and then we are going to set up a forever loop. Okay, now this forever loop is going to include a branching statement. So an if statement, which is gonna choose what happens based on a certain condition or a couple of conditions in this instance. So we need to grab our if something happens then, and then also our else box there and drop that inside our forever loop. Now the next little piece of code that we need to build is the condition for our if statement. And this is gonna get a little bit tricky. Okay, so you need to make sure that you follow these steps really, really carefully. We're gonna jump into our operators menu and we are going to move and grab this one here, which is our or menu. So you can see that it's got two things that allows it to be with an or written in the middle. So I'm gonna just plop that in there inside the if statement. So now our thing's gonna say if something or something then, which means we can set two conditions to be able to check to see what is going to happen. And then if either of them is correct, it's going to allow that to happen for us. So the first thing that we need to do is make sure that if our lives are above a certain number, this heart is going to be red, which is gonna allow us to um, have that counted um, and uh, will graphically show that it's available to the player. So to do that, what we're gonna do is grab this little block here that says if um, something is greater than 50. Okay, now we don't want it greater than 50, but you need to make sure, that you might've noticed that when I try and drop it there, it might try and put it onto the or block itself. We want this one on either the left hand side or the right hand side, it doesn't matter. But you need it to be in one half of the or block. We're gonna change that to the number one and we're gonna come into our variables menu and grab our little lives block here and drop that into this side. So now what you'll see is you have that when our green flag is clicked, if our lives are greater than one, this is gonna be a certain condition, but we also want it to have another condition as well. So in this instance, we're gonna grab our equals block and drop that into the right hand side over there. And then we're gonna have the same thing. So we're gonna have a one there and we're gonna grab from our variables menu, another lives block and drop it in there. So basically what we've got here is a statement that says that if our lives are greater than one or if our lives are equal to one, we want our heart to look a certain way, which is red. So we are gonna come into our looks menu here and we're gonna say, uh, grab this one, which is switch costume two. Now you'll see that at the moment it says heart purple. Now we don't want that. We wanna open this one up and change it to heart red. Okay, now if either of these conditions are not true, so it's not equal to one and it's not greater than one, which means that it has to be zero or negatives, um, which could happen in this instance, uh, we want it to change to the purple costume. So we're gonna grab that same block and just drop it into that little section there. So our statement now reads that if our lives are greater than zero, are greater than one, or our lives are equal to one, be red, otherwise be purple. Okay, and that's gonna be perfect. And this is now set up for us to be able to copy and paste our code. So the next things we can do so that we can be really quick and sort of cheat our way through this is if you right click on your heart, you can see that there's a little button here that says duplicate. So if I duplicate that once, I get heart number two, duplicate that twice, I get heart number three, four, and five. So now I have five hearts ready to go. The things that we need to make sure that we do so that we can go through and change this is first of all, we're gonna select heart number two. Okay, super important that you pick heart two because these settings that we're gonna set are for heart number two. The things we need to change, very simple, we're gonna come into our X position here and we're going to change that to negative 200. Okay, now that doesn't seem like a very large amount that we're gonna move it, but what it's gonna do is it's gonna place that heart just next to our first heart here on the top left-hand side of the screen, but to the right-hand side of the heart. Okay, because now it's not in the same position on the X axis. And then we're just gonna change these so that they say two lives. Heart number two, two lives. 
Okay, so now we're gonna do the same thing with heart number three. So you select heart number three from your sprite library. We're gonna change the X position. So last time we had negative 200, this time we're gonna have negative 180. Okay, so again, that's just gonna move a little bit further across. Heart number three, we need to change both of the lives boxes to three because obviously we're trying to increase this each time so that as we lose a life, different hearts are gonna to change to purple. So now that we've got three done, we can jump into four. Okay, heart number four, negative 160, and then four lives each. And then hopefully you've got the hang of this now. We're gonna jump into heart number five, and then it's negative 140. Okay, so we're taking 20 off each time, and then we're gonna have five lives each time here. Okay, now that we have our five hearts set up, if we press the green flag, you should notice that they all align up here at the top. If you can only see four hearts or less, it might mean that your X positions that you've typed in for some of your hearts are the same and they're actually sitting on top of each other and overlapping. So just make sure that you then click back through and look at heart number one, negative 220, heart two, negative 200, negative 180, negative 160, negative 140. Okay, and then that'll all be set and ready to go. Now that we have our heart set up, we can jump into starting to code our button. So if I select button here, this allows me to then start to put my code in, okay? And this code is super simple, very, very easy for us to put in. All we're gonna do is that if we click our green tick button, it is going to increase our lives by one. So we're gonna come into our events menu here, grab the when this sprite is clicked box, and then come into your variables, variables menu and we're gonna say change lives by one. Okay, that's it. Nothing on top of that. And then on our uh, button here for our cross, which is gonna take our lives away, we're literally gonna put the same code in but just change it to negative one. So we're gonna grab events when this sprite is clicked. Okay, and then we're gonna grab our um, variables one and say change lives. But as I said, we're gonna change that one to negative one. Okay, now, all that means for us now is that when we run our game, these buttons now work. So the code we put in is gonna set our variable to change. So if I click on this tick button, you can see that it goes up to six, seven, eight, nine, ten. If I click the cross button, it goes nine, eight, seven, six, five. But if I click it once more, we should see it go to four and our heart change to purple. Three, heart changes to purple, heart changes to purple. If I add my tick back on, heart goes back to red, lives goes back to three. Okay, so in our actual game, if we were putting this in, we would probably hide our lives variable that you can see sitting up there at the top, and we would just have our hearts visible. But the reason that I wanted to put that into this demonstration is so that you can see that when we click these buttons, it changes by the correct number. Now, as I said, if we go into the negatives, nothing changes, they just all stay purple until we work our way back up until we have some positive lives. So hopefully that explains how you can build a super simple but really, really effective and quite pretty looking uh, lives indicator for your players. And I look forward to seeing you over in our next Scratch video.